The last topic that we're going to cover in this lecture uh, uh, involves the, our understanding of how accurate and precise our, our measured data values are. So we're going to define measurement error as the difference between the actual value of a variable and the value that we've obtained through measurement. So we all have an actual height. But when I go out to measure your height with a tape measure, I might make a small mistake. And therefore, the value that I actually record as your height might be slightly different from your true height. And that difference is something that we are going to call measurement error. And there's many sources of error in our data sets. So the one I just gave you, for example, is human error. I might have measured you and read the tape wrong and subtracted or added some height to your actual height. I might have made a mistake um, because my tape measure is no good. Maybe my tape measure is systematically off uh, by an eighth of an inch. And therefore, every measurement I make is going to have some kind of instrumental error, an error that's caused by the fact that my instrument isn't a perfect instrument. We might also have error when we type uh, our written notes into the computer. So I might take notes on how tall you are. When I enter that data into Excel, I might make a mistake and, and input the wrong number. That's another kind of human error, data entry error. Or we could have rounding error, where um, you are exactly 6 feet 0.2578 inches tall, but I can only measure you to the closest quarter inch, and therefore I'm going to round off the rest. And that difference between the closest quarter inch and your actual height is some measurement error. And what we want to do is kind of discuss uh, these types of errors and, and to specifically conceptualize how we might describe the errors that we have in our measurements. So the first concept is precision, or the level of exactness associated with the measurement. And typically, precision is identified by the number of decimal digits in our measurement. So if we are measuring height, I might be able to, if I, have a, if I had a very, very precise meter stick, I might be able to give you a measurement to the closest millimeter, as in the case of the top measurement scale. So here I'm able to give you, based on, oops, OK. So based on this top portion of the, the ruler, I'm able to measure a distance or a length to the nearest millimeter. On the other hand, using this instrument down below over here, I can only be as precise as the closest eighth of an inch. And because an eighth of an inch here is a bigger distance than a single millimeter, then the millimeter measurement is going to be more precise than the eighth of an inch measurement. So it has to do with, 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 I mean, it has to do with how exact we can be. And here we can be more exact with millimeters than we can with, with eighths of inches. Because the difference between two millimeters is much smaller than the difference between two eighths of an inch. Now, sometimes, and especially in geography and GIS applications, we deal with something called spurious precision, which is when we report um, a data value to be more precise than it actually is based on the precision of the, of the, of the tools that we use to take the measurement. So, for example, we might have a, a map of the world that's this big, the size of your computer screen. And sometimes we can use a GIS, a geographic information system, or maybe like Google Maps, to point it at a location. So we might try to calculate the distance, say, between Toronto and, and Salt Lake City. So the first thing that we do is we point over here at where Salt Lake City is. And imagine this is uh, a map of, of North America. And I'm really going to butcher this right now, so I apologize. But OK, so there's North America. Here's Canada, here's the US. So here's Salt Lake City. We just found the location there. And here's Toronto over there. 
Now, the precision with which we just selected those locations, measured the locations of these two cities, was probably about as precise as, um, I don't know, maybe down to the closest hundred mile. We can't really tell. Between here and here is probably a hundred miles. We selected this location. The actual location of Salt Lake City is anywhere within that kind of range, give or take a hundred miles. Same with Toronto over there. Now, when we gave that measurement, the GIS that we use the, is, is going to give us an extremely precise measurement of the location where we just touched. It's going to give us the x and y coordinate, the longitude and latitude of that location, probably down to the closest nanometer. We'll often see something like 45.75265 two degrees. Now, that level of precision, I'm telling you, is probably to the closest nanometer, even though we just selected that location with an instrument that can give us precision up to about the closest hundred miles. And when we calculate, um, when we report this data value in our data set as the location of that city over there, of Salt Lake City, um, we are introducing spurious precision. We are going to communicate that we know the location of Salt Lake City up to the closest nanometer, but really we only inputted the data up to the closest hundred miles. And that's an example of communicating excess precision. We could take this even further and say we got Google Maps to calculate the distance between these two cities. We've got spurious uh, precision in how we've defined the x and y coordinates of both cities. So we have the x and y over here. And all of these measurements we've added spurious precision to. When we calculate this distance, Google Maps will probably tell us something like 2,565.234, you know, 48 meet, uh, kilometers or miles. And it's going to give us that distance measurement. It's going to say the distance from Salt Lake City to Toronto uh, is 2,565.2348 miles. That's something the precision is going to be at the same level of precision that was given in this x and y coordinate. All right, so probably something close to the nearest nanometer. And therefore, if we are storing, say, distance to Toronto in our data set, um, we're going to be introducing a huge level of spurious precision here. We probably don't know this distance really that accurately. We probably only know it, sorry, as precisely. We probably only know it up to the closest hundred miles, the same level of precision that we actually had when we measured these locations. But because of this introduction of spurious precision, we're going to also have a spurious calculation, a spurious level of precision in the calculation of distance. The next measurement concept is something that we call accuracy, the degree to which a measured value differs from the actual value. So this is often referred to as systematic bias when we uh, repeat our measurement and we systematically or consistently have a different, um, uh, a different measurement than we, uh, sorry, we systematically see the same amount of measurement error in our measurement. So that often happens when your instruments aren't calibrated properly. If I have a scale that, it, that adds half a pound incorrectly to each person it weighs, then I'm systematically going to have a variable that, that is not very accurate. There's going to be a half pound bias in all of our measurements. We often also are concerned with the, vil the validity of measurements um, where, where we um, let me start again here. So the, the validity of a measurement is the degree to which the measured variable reflects the specific concept that the researcher is studying. So we might have um, an interest in knowing someone's suicidal tendencies. So the thing that we're interested in measuring is how likely a person is to to commit suicide. Very likely, not so likely, 
or some scale, a probability that someone's going to commit suicide in the next 10 years of their life. Maybe we want to measure that concept. We don't have an instrument or a tool that can precisely measure one's propensity to feel sad or one's propensity to commit suicide. But we are going to use some variables like a questionnaire and a survey to try to assess the likelihood that someone might commit suicide. And the, the degree to which these questions that we ask actually match well with the concept or the idea that we're trying to measure is how is a uh, that is what we call the validity of the measurements the validity of the measurement so if I wanted to know uh, how much you like working instead measure mm, whether or not you chew chewing gum well chewing chewing gum isn't a valid measure of how much you like working but what is a valid measure of how much you like working? Well, I can ask you simply, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you enjoy working? And that's a far more valid measurement of your enjoyment of work in compared to some random measurement of, say, how much chewing gum you chew. So uh, that's validity. And now re reliability, or you can also call this stability, is the degree to which uh, data is consistently measured over time or across space. So how reliable is, are our measurements? So if I were to measure uh, the, the height of a wall, you would expect that over time I keep on getting the same height measurement for that wall. If I come back once a year and measure that wall, I should have the same measurement over time. Uh, now, I'm not going to have the exact same measurement because I'm a person and I'm using a measuring tape to measure that wall, but we can assess how similar these measurements over time, and that assessment is an assessment of the reliability or the stability of our measurements. And here's a nice uh, pictorial way to describe precision, accuracy, uh, uh, and, and stability. So in this first box, I actually like to start with, um, OK, we can start with, with, with this first box over here. So if we are trying to measure this target of the bullseye, and we take a bunch of measurements of this location, and they end up over here in this top left corner, what can we say about the measurements we took? Now remember, accuracy is the, is the degree to which the measurements we take reflect the true value of, 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 the, of the observation. So in this case, we definitely don't have accurate measurements. There is a consistent bias in our measurements. We are consistently saying that the location of the bullseye is out here uh, and not over here. But we're doing it in quite a precise way. You know. All of our measurements that we make are right here in the small little box. So that gives us a higher level of precision. We can be more sure based on our incorrect measurements, but our inaccurate measurements, that the value is here inside this little box. Now, on the other hand, over here, we can have accurate but not precise. So accurate because. You know, on average, if we took the average of all of these dots, we're going to end up with a value somewhere here, very close to the true location of the bullseye. But it's not very precise. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, random error, say, in these measurements. That a lot of our measurements aren't very close to the true value, but on average, we are getting something close to the value. So. Because we're getting something on average close, that means it's accurate. But because there's a lot of dispersion or spread away from that value, this is not precise. And over here, we are neither precise nor accurate. The average value of this spread is probably out over here. But the precision, the level of precision, is not very high at all. This is you know, plus or minus a huge distance. 
in comparison to over here where we were only plus or minus a very small difference. In this case, we are both accurate and precise. Now, along the bottom charts, we have time in the x dimension. So along this, these dimensions, we have time. And we have the value that we've measured along the y-axis over here. The dotted line is the true value. So in this case, this is like the true height of a wall doesn't change over time. And this line represents how we've measured the height of the wall over time. So in this case, our measurements are very stable. They don't change much over time, but they're not very accurate. We're always overestimating. We're always overestimating the height of the wall. In this second example over here, we are neither stable nor accurate. Our height measurement is changing over time quite a lot. And at no time are we very close to being, uh, having an accurate measurement of the height of the wall. Over here, we are accurate but not stable. So we are dancing around at each time period, getting a correct measurement. We're dancing around the true value with our measurements. Uh, but it's not very stable. So sometimes we're a little bit high, sometimes we're low. The stability is, is just not there. And in this case, we are both stable and accurate. So we are consistently measuring height, and we're doing so uh, in an accurate way. Our, the height measurement that we take is spot on. It's the exact same height, more or less, as the, the height of the wall that we actually should receive.